It was just over three weeks ago, protesters were pushing the police line back, taking over the blocks around the East Precinct. Well, early this morning, it was the police pushing protesters out of the area, better known as the CHOP. Not everybody left peacefully and police arrested more than three dozen people. Sky King is now flying over Capitol Hill where you can see a massive cleanup operation has been underway. Tents, trash, barricades, plywood being moved out as some protesters remain on the outskirts of those closed streets. And just as the sun was coming up, police moved into that protest area by order of the mayor and many protesters still sleeping were told to get out. You have five minutes to disperse. I want you guys to picture your daughter's faces on mine right now. Police arrested those who refused to leave, other protesters leaving on their own. Some neighbors say they have been waiting weeks to get their streets back. I want to really sit there and say that our message has been diluted through be because of the violence that has occurred and different insiders coming in trying to push their own message and our own agenda. But as I continue to say that, we must continue to stand on one accord with each other in love and unity. Once the protesters were gone, the cleanup began. Chief Carmen Best and officers went back into the East Precinct, and this is the first time they have been inside there since the 8th. No word on when all officers will be back to work there, but they were ex excited to get back inside the building. Well, this ends three weeks of protesters controlling several blocks up on Capitol Hill. This is how we got here today. It all started June 8th amid the protests following the death of George Floyd. The protesters wanted to call attention to racial injustice, police brutality, and calling for police to be defunded now. The city tried to move the barriers out last week, but they were stopped by a lot of protesters there. Some of those barriers were then moved yesterday, but the protesters made their own barriers. Let's see, dramatically visual tonight compared to what we have seen in the past three weeks. Yeah, in fact, right now, the only people allowed inside the boundaries of what's become known as the CHOP are residents, business owners, and Seattle police. And for many business owners there, the hope is that this marks a return to normalcy. King 5 Sebastian Robertson joining us now with the latest live from the CHOP zones. Well, the return to normal won't happen immediately. This is proving to be a uh, slow process that may take a few days. I want to show you uh, just how many police officers are in the area that was once known as the CHOP, police replacing the presence of protesters. And, you know, since the very beginning, business owners and residents have told me that they feel they've been caught in the middle. CHOP has fallen. A half a dozen city blocks occupied by protesters for more than three weeks is now in the hands of Seattle police. Taken by force early Wednesday morning. I don't think anyone's won anything out of this. I think uh, we've actually lost. I think we lost a mayor. We've lost a city council person. We've lost residents. We've lost small businesses. We've lost the Black Lives Matter movement. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Business owner Faisal Khan never closed, but did see his neighbors board up. Some even shut down. The situation escalating when a second man, a teenager, was shot and killed, another wounded. The loss of life for children, it's the worst part of it. Just this afternoon in a press conference, the mayor said CHOP could not go on any longer. The deteriorating conditions and repeated gun violence required us to immediately address public safety concerns. Conditions that residents have been documenting from day one. Many of the residents and business owners over the past three weeks only agreeing to speak with me on the condition of anonymity for fear of retribution. It seems like we're supposed to sacrifice our peace of mind, our safety for this movement. And I don't think that's fair to ask of us. For now, with hundreds of police in the area, that threat of violence seems to be over. Though the area is still not open to the public, it remains occupied. But this time, under new leadership. The focus remains on the East Precinct, both officers on the ground and the chief saying today that it will once again be occupied by Seattle police and will go operational. When is really the next question? In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News.
Sebastian, thank you. Yeah, we're all waiting for that answer. Meanwhile, in all, more than three dozen people were arrested as Seattle police moved protesters out of the chop this morning. Police say the arrests were made for failure to disperse, obstruction, resisting arrest, and assault. One man arrested had these weapons on him, a large metal pipe and a kitchen knife. Meanwhile, coming up at 530, King 5 was there behind those police lines right next to officers as they moved protesters out of the chop and went back inside the East Precinct for the first time in weeks. We've heard from police, we've heard from activists, and now we're going to hear from a voice that has been with the chop from the beginning. Our Vanessa Mishania had a one-on-one -on -one conversation about where the movement for equality goes now in Seattle. Vanessa. Greg, good evening. She goes by the name of Jay, and she's been a strong voice in the current movement going on in Seattle right now, even before the creation of CHOP. And she says the protesters, they are not happy with the city. They are not happy with Mayor Durkin. They don't feel like they're being heard. And even though the physical occupation of Capitol Hill is no longer here, the fight is not over. What is your opinion on what happened, the police response to CHOP this morning? All of that behavior speaks to the character of Jenny Durkin. It speaks to the character of our governing bodies. It speaks to exactly why you have individuals making their way out of their homes and into the streets to demonstrate and exercise their First Amendment right. If she's interested in things changing realistically and not just going back to business as usual, because that will never happen, um, it's going to require her implementing her senses, stepping up and, and doing the work. Uh, in a real way. I saw uh, on Twitter this morning uh, from you that you said that, you know, CHOP was never the goal, and it's important to keep that in mind. Can you elaborate on that? It was never the goal for us to establish Capitol Hill as an area that we could occupy for an extended period of time. Um, it's a symptom, and I think that CHOP genuinely can become or had become, in a, in a way, a distraction from the actual demands that have been given to Jenny Durkin and other governing bodies, it was a distraction from the reality that brought us out. You know, uh, what has been going on in the black community historically is unbelievable. It's devastating. It's traumatizing in so many ways. But we are resilient people and we're also brilliant people. And I think. Areas like CHOP are an example, not just for us, but for any place across the country that is, is rising up during this time and choosing to be active, choosing to advocating for the, the validity of black lives. Where can we physically look to the movement next? Are we going to be seeing it around Seattle? Is there going to be more marches? What are we going to see? For black people, this movement has been going on for a long time. For some of us, this is just our life story. Um, and for white people who have recently entered the chat, as you might say, uh, now is the time to start allocating your resources, utilizing your white privilege in a way that benefits black realities. Um, and uh, this is so far from the end. <laughs> Jay tells me that until their demands are met, defunding the police, reallocating those funds to be put back into the community and releasing the protesters that we can expect to see protesters demonstrate in the streets. And I had a much longer conversation with Jay than you saw in that story, and I'm going to post the entire interview in its entirety if you're interested in seeing that to my Facebook page, Vanessa Mishania TV. For now, live on Capitol Hill, I'm Vanessa Mishania, King 5 News. Okay, Vanessa, thank you. Mayor Jenny Durkin says she is working with community organizers to make sure CHOP's message isn't lost. We must recommit to the message that brought tens of thousands of residents from in and around the city to the streets demanding change. We must remember that it was the unjust murder of George Floyd that ignited a global movement, including here in Seattle. Durkin outlined several goals her administration is focusing on, including reimagining policing and ways officers can be held more accountable. One state senator wants to stop what happened in Capitol Hill from happening anywhere else. State Senator Steve O'Ban is proposing a ban on protest zones like the CHOP. The Republican lawmaker says he believes in free speech, but says protesters should not be able to block access to emergency vehicles and services. And in a written statement, O'Ban spoke about the activists saying, quote, the one demand that had remained unchanged was their refusal to allow law enforcement to timely perform their vital functions of protecting residents from violence, threats, and property destruction. 
The bill would withhold state funding to cities who allow autonomous zones. It would also impose fines of up to $10,000 per day.